Yeah. yeah. Hi everybody. Uh, welcome to our Kickstarter stream of uh, of our pieces. Um, this painting tutorial is going to be of the Aaron, the new Aaron Tour Mountain. Woo! Uh, yeah. Pretty exciting. And we're going to do lots of different types of Aaron Tour pieces. Uh, we got like a ledges trifecta ledges, escarpments, uh, wire stone pieces, waterfalls. So we're going to do a little bit of everything today. But first we're going to like clean off all these old Anzor pieces that are just, that just collapsed in avalanche. <laughs> it was so realistic. Yeah, right? it was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Glad we got some yodelers down too. They've been causing a lot of ruckus here. Yeah. The ghosts, though, they were like a, they were innocent, and but they had to, they had to sacrifice themselves for the ghosts. Rip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do okay, you want to start with? Uh, so I think I'm gonna start with. Um, I think I'm gonna start with the ledges. Uh, one thing to note about all the pieces that I'm painting is that they're already base coated with um, the, the Aaron Thor gray color. Like if you notice, if you have old Aaron Thor pieces, um, the bottoms of them aren't really dungeon, uh, dungeon gray. They're more of like a grayish color. And actually we're hoping in the next run of, um, of Dread Hollow and um, uh, when we put these into production that they'll all be cast in this gray color already uh, so you so you won't have to mix it yourself because it isn't just straight out of the bottle um, with the coin it's a little bit of a mix okay so let's get started Woo. yeah uh, sorry that's got my setup all jangling around that's okay. all right so uh, a lot of people have been complimenting the uh, pieces in chat. I'm wondering if there's any piece specifically people like best that they've seen in the mountain scheme. I feel like I kind of know the guess. My uh, my favorite piece in the whole Kickstarter is definitely the waterfalls. Right? I like I love the sculpt on it. Like it it has so much motion in it that it was just like really easy to paint and a lot of fun. Yeah. One of the cool things too is that a lot of people yesterday were flagging on stream that um, the set that we were including probably wouldn't be like, you know, to the standard of like wanting to build like the waterfall of their dreams. So now Nate and Jay are gonna discuss it and they're gonna hopefully come back with something that works better for everyone. Um, if anybody, you know, was able to see that add on update. You got you a little bit out of camera. Oh. All right, so I hope that, uh, you know, planning all that time on the uh, open, <laughs> opening gag was worth it. <laughs> Did you guys hear the yodeling music? <laughs> they were saying that we were kind of quiet, so I'm hoping that... Uh, kind of reenacted. Yeah, we yeah, could, we we'll can, do we it again. We can play some of it it's, sporadically. Yeah, it'll take the entire hour to rebuild that thing, and then we'll <laughs> close with it again. <laughs> Because that's really what's the most important part is the bit. That's what you guys want to see. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is just like a heavy dry brush of earth stone and school bus. And you just kind of slather it on. You don't have to be too neat about it because there's a whole nother dry brush going on underneath. Is that the cardboard? Uh, no, it's a mix of earth stone and school bus. And one thing about the Aaron Thor paint scheme is also when you're painting forest or swamp, all of the rocks. And both of those are painted the exact same way as Aaron Thor. And the opposite, all of the moss and greenery is painted the exact same way in Swamp and Forest. Do you want to show a comparison? The other Aaron Thor? Oh, yeah. So this is... Let's get a couple, because they do vary, like, a lot. You're also just on the beginning steps, too, so we don't have the... Uh, yeah, maybe I should do that. I mean, you can kind of see next to the... A little bit lower. The waterfall. There you go. Um, it's kind of like I tried to do, because the Aaron Thor, it can vary a lot. I tried to do like a combination of like both that would look good, like 
with other the different variations. But we'll do a side by side, uh, like at the end when we have more pieces. Because nice. Yeah. Yeah, we got a lot of different pieces actually going on today. Yeah. We're gonna have a smattering. And they're all pretty simple. Like the waterfall's a little bit like of extra touches, but they're all kind of the same thing. Is it a 50-50 mix of the Earthstone and the school bus? Uh, I would say it's a little bit less. It's like 60-40. It's more Earthstone than school bus. Cool. Do you have a favorite piece? Well, okay. The waterfalls are the favorite piece for this section. Do you have a favorite piece that you can reveal for the other sections? Um, the floor, the forest floor with a trail in it. Oh yeah, that one's that nice. And I really like the way that it's sculpted and like good, like a mean like the better the sculpt is, like the more amazing it is to paint. And that one I really just love the sculpt of. Nice. And some of the swamp banks, like the larger ones too, are really beautiful. Man, we're gonna have to think of the next bit going on though to keep things lively. We don't want to just paint the whole time. Yeah. We have to like get Nate mad somehow. <laughs> uh, for everybody at home, um, Nate has a wife and kids. So on the streams where he doesn't have to be here, he chooses not to, which is good. Everybody, you know, needs a break. We're all kind of working overtime for um, like the Kickstarter and everything. So uh, this is kind of the free reigns show. And... As long as Nate doesn't watch it and have any critiques tomorrow, <laughs> we might just keep doing uh, doing some chaos. Yeah. Um, the chat would like to know if there's any beans that we're going to be showing tonight, and I don't think there are. What are you talking about? <laughs> there's beans? No, no. You got beans? All right. Um, Duke of Dirth says, your schedules are crazy. I can't understand how you all don't collapse. Oh, oh, yeah, I uh, took a nap before the. Yeah, we do collapse. <laughs> yeah. We have... I literally, like, I was like, I just need to, s like, I feel better now after sleeping a little bit. Like, I, I did get a full night r rest. It's just, like, it's the accumulation of all the hours. I just feel like my body's, like, needs as much rest as it can possibly get right now. Yeah, what's kind of different about this cart Kickstarter than Kickstarters before, from what I understand, is that a lot of the kickstarters in the past have been kind of like you'll be working the entire kickstarter and it'll be crazy but we have actually done a lot of homework but because of that we um have been working for a long time even before the kickstarter launch just to make sure everything is kind of tied up uh so i don't know if nate's said it on stream but he he's said it a lot in person where this is like the most ooh, excuse me um prepared for a kickstarter we have been so I mean, you have, you have to, like, give and take somewhere. Yeah, and also, like, I think, for me at least, and, like, me and Hamster, um, a lot of the, a f lot of the factory in China, like, they got delayed a lot, which meant that we got the sculpts and prototypes to paint way later than usual. So we had a very, like, limited amount of time to paint everything up for shooting. And I think that rush in such like a short period of time like usually i feel like it's more stretched out yeah and with so many pieces too like. yeah um i me 202 says so with the painting of the pizzas here how does that compare to what is published for the mountains as i'm wondering if the dwarvenite is darker it will be slightly darker the yeah the dwarvenite's slightly darker um what the factory does with the production of the dread hollow escarpments is they actually paint in the gray um, so it'll be cast in uh, the dungeon gray uh, color, and then the parts that are escarpments, they'll paint in the base color. Uh, and versus like the Aaron Thor, it's just cast in that, but we want to change it going forward so the factory doesn't have to paint in this gray color first for all the rock details. Oh, man. Um, so it'll match Aaron Thor better, uh, and it'll be less like. Uh, like, there's less mis variation in the factory stuff because they just cast it in those colors and they only have to worry about two dry brushes, like, matching kind of thing. Uh, and, it's, and it's easier for you guys if you want it unpainted, like, 
you only have to do like one to two dry brushes to be able to make it look um, like like the factories. Real Arte says, if Nate's not there, let's channel Stefan fireballs all around. <laughs> Did you hear about all yeah, this? Yeah, okay. Nate told me before. Yeah, he's... Uh, Is Stefan in the chat? I don't see him here. He was going to... We had him on stream yesterday, and the day before, he was going a little wild in the chat. <laughs> um, so wild, in fact, that he didn't realize he was on the stream the next day. What? <laughs> yeah, he wasn't ready. He's, but, he thought he was, like, lucid dreaming or something? Oh! Well, I was like... Like, oh, Stefan, I'm excited to see you tomorrow. And he's like, I am? I'm on the stream. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's the difference between swamps and red hollow pink paint schemes? Oh, okay. So that's it's pretty like it's pretty simple. The the ledges, um are wait, the the question was ledges versus swamp banks. Um, let me find it again. Swamps and dread hollow banks. Oh. So I think the Swamp Banks versus the Dread Hollow Ledges, or Dread Escarpments. Hollow, Dread Hollow Banks? Maybe, yeah. Maybe it's, yeah, the Chaos 6 Banks. Um, well, it's it's interesting, like the Chaos 6 Banks, um, the new paint scheme, which is simplified, matches the Swamp exactly, um, but the Swamp has like two extra stuffs. It has like dirtying up the edge of the bank so it looks like more swampy um with a few colors uh like it involves painting the edge black and then going over with a mud color and then going over and filling in um the sludge with a green so i'd say like the swamp is the most uh complicated but it the land part of it matches and is compatible with previous Dread Hollow and the new like Dread Hollow paint scheme 2.0. Topulus says, do you guys varnish the pieces after you paint them? Oh, to seal them in? Mm -hmm. Well, the, yeah, that's an interesting thing. Like we'll, we'll go back. I remember going back and seeing like boxes of um, even KS5 and the, especially like the white resin it will just get super chalky and dusty and it's like i don't remember the pieces looking like this like so we don't varnish the majority of stuff that we use for prototypes because that would be just be too much um what we do is the paint masters we typically varnish those so that um when china ha when the factory has them um for many months before they go into the paint production they'll be sealed so they don't get um, like the ch the ch they almost get like dusty if we don't varnish them. So we we do the paint masters with varnish, but uh, everything else would just kind of be too much. Are there any new paint colors coming out of Wildlands? Mm, I'm just trying to think like what we're kind of using all existing paints. We could use a purple that that would be helpful because that comes. And in the swamp quite a bit. And also, like, me and Hamster were talking about, like, a pre-bottled dark wash. Oh, yeah. If that's something you guys would be interested in, like, let us know. But that would be, like, be an interesting idea um, for, like, accessory use or even to, like, dirty up the banks, the swamp banks, if you're painting them yourself. Um, Eldritch Alchemist would like to know what corny formula you use for the Dwarvenite base gray color. So... <laughs> It's always like it's always it it's uh I always like I always have to write it down. It's black, base gray, earthstone, school bus, lava red, and cavern dry brush. <laughs> yeah, that's the like I remember you yeah. having to mix it for like all the base painting or whatever and it uh it's yeah. pretty elaborate. Yeah, costume. you know what? That would actually be a good color to come out with. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> no kidding. I mean, we've definitely talked about Purple's that. great and all, but uh, yeah. how about that base <laughs> that gray color? Six part, yeah. <laughs> that six part. That six part color. You know, color. just like the background of every single piece. To be yeah, clear. well, the problem is like, like some pieces, like a waterfall or like the snake temple, you'll need it. For the majority of pieces, like people don't necessarily use it. I guess maybe if you wanted to like repaint something you've already painted and start from scratch but I guess it's never been like it's always it always seemed like something that was more helpful to us than everyone else with the exception of like snake temple or 
um, or waterfalls where you have something like translucent and you have to paint it in. Um, but yeah, that's actually, that's a good one. Like I remember us talking about that. I forgot about that. Is there a paint guide or chart with each set or piece? Um, there are paint guides, guides on the website. Um, we want to make, one of our goals during the beginning of the pandemic was to make, um, like updated color, uh, charts and steps, but that kind of like, as things got busier, we weren't able to do that. Um, we don't have any kind of like up to date guides. I'd say the best thing that you could do is watch the videos on YouTube with the joy of Dorvin painting. Nate's here, by the way. Oh, cool. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> after the purple talk, he said, more purple! <laughs> <laughs> that guy's crazy for purple. <laughs> yeah, I, it's like, I think that people whose favorite color is purple feel the yeah. most passionately about yeah. their favorite color than anyone else. No, that's true. They'll kill people over there purple. Must, yeah, there must like... truly be something really good about purple, because, <laughs> yeah. like, man, I, like, I love my favorite color, but it's not the same, like... Purple people will wear a purple all day long, have purple houses and purple wives and purple cars, and it's basically, I'm blue, but with purple. Yeah, they should have wrote it about purple people rather than blue. Chris would like to know if you think you could beat Hamster in a fight. Um, I think if it was just, like, melee, you'd beat me. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, if I, if we were able to have, like, any weapon, yeah, I think, uh... He might still beat me. <laughs> <laughs> well, what weapon would you choose? Uh, I would choose, like, a shiv or something. Like Not like, even a gun? Where, no. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get up close and, like, yeah. he doesn't think I have anything, and then at the last minute. Just right in the gun. Bam. Yeah. yeah, I think that's, a, like, yeah, that's a sneak attack right there. Yeah. You get bonus points for that. Um, Seraphis the Bland says, I love the way that you don't paint the dry brush evenly on pieces. I'm going to try that. Yeah, for this, it doesn't, like like I said before, it doesn't, the one you want to be even is the final one. This is just something that it just gives a little color underneath. And in fact, like, it's better to be uneven because, like, different, different, you make it even and then you make the second dry brush even, the second dry brush is going to cover up this dry brush, so if you're a little bit uneven with it, this will show through. So, and also I'm painting at an angle, so <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it might be a little bit m more uh, messy than, than usual. Um, we were talking about favorite pieces for the Kickstarter, but do you have any least favorite pieces to paint for the Kickstarter? Gray Raven asks. Hmm. I think the swamp banks because, not because they're not fun to paint, but because I went through a lot of variations of it, and it's it's the most complicated one, so it just, like, gives me deja vu of, like, going through, like, having to redo it, and then uh, just how long it would take to, to paint through, like, one round of them. Um, Orion Noir says, are there... Uh, future streams plan to demonstrate painting for each biome. Uh, I think. I think we talked about. Yeah. Uh, well, as far as streams go, there's going to be next week. There's going to be a stream with Hamster. Mm -hmm. Um, doing ruins. That's on Sunday. But yeah, that's on the biome. But uh, the next one will be um, the uh going into like forest details. I guess forest and swamp, with me. Um, but like as far as instructional videos, like proper instruction, you're gonna do like off camera, like um, not off camera, off stream, like just like an edited video of the different steps, uh, so people can get just a, a better idea of like the different steps and like how much effort they would have to put in to paint it themselves. Uh, Nerd Bauchery has an interesting question. Is there any paint schemes that DF wanted to do for Wildlands, but it found it was too much for the factory to copy? Uh, can you, sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah, is there any, uh, basically painting scheme that we wanted to do, but the factory couldn't reproduce, so we had to, uh, change? Um, I mean, yeah, I'd say the one that comes to mind most, there's always a little bit of variation, um, 
like hellscape we, it was really simple and we didn't have to change it at all which was great uh the thread hollow like it came out of first the first run and there was a lot of variation and also they asked us to simplify it because uh it was just it would be way too expensive to do another run of it so it I'd say that one is the one that had the most variation because it was the most complicated. Um, Take Hold XP asks, what percentage of time do you have paint on your hands? Stay turnt. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, these are like dirtier than normal. Like, I feel like whenever I'm doing a lot of base coating, like you can see that most of my paint on my hands is the base color. Have you ever had that thing? So, okay, for base coating, I would hold it a certain way each time, and then I get a bubble of paint, like, on my fingernail or whatever, and I can just peel it what? off, like, layer and layer. And layer. I'll show you sometime. Oh, so, like, it, like, ricochets off your brush, and, like, a droplet goes on your hand and then dries? Not even that. It's, like, um, like over time, paint just built up in layers. So I was getting, like, like... So oh I'm God. very sloppy. Yeah, I know. Well, I was, like, trying to speed through it, really jam it out. So, like, the paint was building up and, like, very chaotically, like, just, like, all over basically the thumb and finger. So then my nails were coated with paint. And I could genuinely peel it off and see layer and layer and layer. Um. Let's see. <laughs> No, I've never had that happen. Oh, well, I think I, uh, <laughs> I'm a special blend of painter. <laughs> Party of one? <laughs> oh. Um. oh, the title is misspelled. How embarrassing. I said painting and not painting. Ugh, I done goofed. <laughs> Aaron is great. I hate talking and painting. I'm a listen and paint type of dude, says Odin Forge DM. Yeah, me too. Like it, this, <laughs> <laughs> this is demanding. It's an adjustment to like talk and paint at the same time. It's like I don't know. I mean, I could talk more, but I really don't have much to talk about. It's kind of like when Nate's like, "Ah, oh, tell a joke," and then I'm just kind of like, uh, audience, <laughs> send me jokes to read." <laughs> um, DMN Game says I should keep distracting you, but. Uh, I mean, like, the, the name of the game is to, like, just have a discussion. I think Hamster said that this was kind of like the... So, for people in the audience, there's this magical hour at <laughs> Dwarven Forge around 4 to 6 o'clock. I guess it's a two-hour period. But uh, during that time of day, Hamster at 5 p.m. will always say, Let's go, baby! <laughs> or so he claims. Um, and then everybody just kind of breaks into chaos, and the conversation turns, like... Not dark, but very strange. Very, very chaotic. It, incredibly so. So, uh... Like, I'm I'm good at, like, I have to say, like, when I'm painting, like, I'm good at talking in conversation when it's that chaotic, just, like, raw to say anything kind of thing. <laughs> and I don't think that would translate to the stream. No. Well. well, it's like, in work, we can be kind of unfiltered or whatever, but yeah. then for the stream, it's kind of like, this is going out to the <laughs> internet and this all of our... Forever backers and supporters my dad asks why is six afraid of seven i can only assume that seven eight nine but i heard those are also just rumors is that <laughs> is that really your dad yeah it really is oh cool yeah Paul both my parents are <laughs> they're both uh big fans of uh dwarven forge in the stream and all nice uh, wow, Dad, that's not an appropriate joke at all. <laughs> said, uh, all right, well, we're, I'll, I'll tell you guys after the stream. <laughs> yeah, we're, you're blocked, Dad. <laughs> He's banned. <laughs> uh, so, Eldritch Alchemist asks again, do either of you or anyone in the office like custom painting your own DF pieces, and what unique schemes do you guys enjoy using? Uh, I can dream of painting my own pieces. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't actually gotten, had the time to sit down and, like, it would be nice to do something, like, super detailed on the Dread Hollow, but, or, like, an autumn paint scheme. Yes. Or, yeah. I feel like everybody in the office kind of has that, like, itch to do an autumn paint scheme on the Dread Hollow. Yeah. Um, Hunter for Gerer would like to know what paint is currently going on 
the piece. Oh, okay. So yeah, this is still the first step after the base uh, coat, and it's like a really heavy, kind of messy, dry brush of um, a mixture of earth stone and school bus, and it's like a 60-40 ratio. And then I know that for the waterfall pieces, Toby had to do several iterations of the casting, and it's kind of like the hellscape thing. Is it like, is painting it similarly complicated, or is it like you don't have to worry about light going through and everything? Um, well, it's not, I, I've done pieces before that have been trans, um, like translucent like this, and the trick with it is before you put the base color on, um, you want to put a, a layer of white so it blocks out the light and you don't see the, the paint on the other side as much. Uh, it allows more light to travel through the piece. Um, but for the paint scheme, like it was pretty, like the color, the base color is so beautiful that I just kind of brought out the, the details um, in the texture uh, and just added a little gloss so that um, when you when you put it against a water terrain tray, it seamlessly goes like next to each other because the gloss like helps helps it transition. But it was it, like it was pretty like like easy to paint. Like mm -hmm. I didn't really struggle with uh, the paint scheme um, as much as like other things trying to figure out other things. Oh, and this is what the I want to show you guys. This is what the the casting color looks like completely it's a little unpainted. bit lower oh yeah there you go it's like an, we were, we're going for like a tropical it, it kind of like reminded us of like the when you go in, like into deserts and there's like a very aqua waterfall like that kind of like aqua color it reminds me of baja blast <laughs> in a good way <laughs> or like gatorade <laughs> um so the waterfall dwarvenite will be translucent after production? Yes. Great. Let me see. This keeps scrolling on me, so I'm having a hard time keeping up with comments, but I promise I'm trying to get to them all. Yeah, sure. Uh, Nerd Botry says, like when Bob Ross uses a knife, which I can only assume is like your everyday life. I don't, I don't know what, I forget what that was in reference to, but. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Maybe. I mean, <laughs> that's, not, that's not cool. It no, could be. It could no, be I mean, cool. like the whole idea of like Bob Ross being a murderer or something. Like that. <laughs> I, <laughs> I like that idea less. I like you threatening hamster a lot. Bob Ross, that's just like, that's a figure from my childhood. I don't yeah, want that's to like, lose to murder. That's like, what's that guy with the sweater that we both like? Oh, Mr. Rogers. Yeah. That's like Mr. Rogers being a murderer or something. Oh, that's too dark not in this timeline we already have too much going on um dmn game says i'm planning on getting unpainted master level swamps i know i won't be able to match the df paint schemes is it possible to maybe get some dark acrylic transparencies to go over the df battle boards um that's a good question that might be more of like something to address to nate than aaron yeah. but i'm gonna save your question and i will definitely figure that out for you um so is uh, so is that going to be the unpainted piece Aaron just held up? Uh, yeah, that was the translucent. Um, yeah, no paint on it. Um, which is interesting because I remember, oh, <laughs> the first time it came out, I think that, like, uh, not even accidentally, but, like, kind of, uh, I guess it was on accident. I don't know what I'm saying. But uh, there was some white within the actual. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it came out, the first cast he did, it was like this swirly, like marbly looking white and that um, bluish aqua color, and it looked like the m movement of the water. Yeah, I like that a lot. Do you want to, he's got his eyes, do you want to grab it? Oh yeah, I can grab that. Oh. Okay, cool. Do you know which one it is? Uh, You'll figure it out. We got our helper, Casey, over here. Um, does the factory base coat, or do they just start with dry brush? Uh, well, they start with dry brush, but they don't need to base coat. Um, in the majority of cases, um, because it's usually cast in the base color. Um, but for things like the waterfalls, um, the base color that's used on the rocks, uh, they have to paint in. Um, 
but for the majority of things, like the mountains, will be uh, cast in the base color. On Toby's desk? Oh, on his shelf. Um, what would be the estimated time for you to do a base level of paint on all the pieces in the larger pledges said Finley shards? Um, but, uh, what's a base level? What, what does he mean? I think he base? means base coating. Oh, base coating. I think he's English, so that might be a little linguistical differences. Um, well, the, the Dread Hall, the, the forest and swamp, and mountain, you won't have to base coat because it'll already be cast in the color. Um, but I guess if you were to like base coat all the pieces, like go over them with a different color, like of your own, um, I like I, it's so hard for me to. I would say like a few days at least. Wow. Something like that. Yeah. Probably for all the mega packs too. The light's a little hot on it, but yeah. it gives a pretty good idea. Like, it's mostly, like, through here. But, yeah. So that was one of the first, like, early experiments that he did. Um, did you use white first, then base gray on the waterfall, I believe? Um. Uh. I, no, I... The first step with the waterfall is to do the, oh yeah, okay, white first in the stone areas to block out the light, and then the gray color is a mixture, um, the Aaron Thrower gray color is a mixture, uh, and off the top of my head it's black, base gray, bubbles blue, and lava red, and it creates like this purpley, like lighter, lighter than dungeon gray gray. Uh, and I don't know the exact ra ratio off the top of my head, but we're, we'll do a video on it, um, like hopefully during the the campaign, just so you guys get an idea of like how many steps are involved um, for all the different biomes. Okay, and I think that's enough of the first step. Now I'm gonna move on to the second uh, dry brush, which is like the lighter. Well, it's not as light as this, but it's like the lighter color, um, almost like cavern dry brush, but a little different. Okay. Uh, somebody mentioned that hearing your brush strokes was relaxing, so I might pipe down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's just gonna become ASMR. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I have nothing <laughs> wrong. Like, that's going to go great, too. Can you hear the bristles? <laughs> <laughs> a little closer to the mic, maybe? <laughs> there you go. I can't do ASMR because I laugh too much. I'm doing it. But Unless you're, re like, really into laughter ASMR. It's not great. Can you, <laughs> can you hear it? Can you guys hear the, the ASMR? You have to whisper it. Can you guys hear the ASMR? Wow, I am brushing this piece. This piece is wow. going to be so school press. <laughs> This piece is going to be so beautiful. <laughs> Just take your paper towel and dry off your brush. And next we're going to cut your hair. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> this is taking a turn. <laughs> and then we dissect the jelly belly. <laughs> <laughs> no. trying to save money by buying unpainted pieces during the Kickstarter, which pieces would she be least willing to buy unpainted due to the level of difficulty and effort? Uh, I would say Swamp. Like, like, like it's just the most steps. So I would say buy painted. Swamp and or Forest. Like, if you can do both, I would do both because it saves a lot of time. Um, but the one set, this set, like if you're gonna, if you're like new to painting or um, you just, you want something that's like more s on the simple side, like just basically dry brushing, um, the, the Aaron Thor Mountains is definitely like the simplest of all the paint schemes. What 
is the name of that guy that does the jelly belly? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, somebody in the comments. <laughs> it's really? totally not my fault. Yeah. They knew? Well, yeah, they, uh, Jimmy Hayes, 23. Um, <laughs> I forget the name of him, but he referenced another one of his videos. Run the Cube? Yeah, Run um, for the Cube, yeah. um, where he does a uh, grape dissecting <laughs> video. Wait, that guy, the guy in the comments talked about it? Yeah, he said, is uh, dissecting a jelly belly similar to doing a surgery on a grape? And it is. It's very yeah. similar. I'm glad you made, made that connection. I'm happy you're here, Jimmy Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> is this Stone Edge Dry Brush? Asks Pro Mind. No, it, it's not. It's, it's a mixture of cavern, uh, base gray, and... Earth stone, I believe. It's difficult because I make large batches and sometimes I forget what's in them, but I try to like have swatches and match it each time. Um, but it's a combination of mostly cavern dry brush with base gray uh, and olive dry brush, I believe. Trying to get some ASMR in there. Not actually, I'm trying to find an emoji, but it's uh, proving to be hard. <laughs> <laughs> Are there giveaways during the painting videos? Usually I only watch Nate and Stefan videos. There is not a painting tonight. Um, in the future there might be. Maybe we'll, I don't know. We gotta get some kind of permission for that. What's nice about the Nate videos is he will choose during the stream. He's a very generous guy, so he like likes to be like, you know what, all these viewers, they're awesome, let's give them something, so. Come on, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I wish I had a giveaway to give away. Well, maybe next time we'll uh, have something cool yeah, maybe. to give away. Now that we've heard that you actually like free stuff, we thought you hated it. <laughs> um, maybe we're going to find a way to get that for you. You guys are rare breed. <laughs> <laughs> Truly freaks, but we love you all. <laughs> um, were you able to watch the uh, Titans Tooth Mega Build video that went up today? No. Me neither, but somebody in the comments said that it's very, very good. Oh, nice. I believe it. I do, too. Selena is a very good video editor. Yeah. Have you gone unpainted before? Like, when you get... No. Oh, maybe for, like, um, I think in the past, like, I got miniatures unpainted, like, little miniature mm. add-on packs that we do, but no, no terrain unpainted. You know what? I think I might have gotten the crystal, the crystals in Cavern Ooh, Steep. I would probably do that too, actually. Yeah. I think I want to get, for this Kickstarter, I'm probably going to do all the trees unpainted. Nice. Yeah. So you could do the, the fall. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. There's no reason for trees to not be red and orange and yellow. <laughs> all year round. Yeah. Like, I love green. Don't get me wrong. But that's a ground color. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever look in the look at the ground in, in autumn? Yeah, it's covered in leaves. <laughs> <laughs> it's not green. <laughs> nope, you're right. I'm going to have to get some clay, though, and put some more leaves on the ground. Also, where I'm from, the ground does stay green until it snows. Oh, really? Yeah, and then even sometimes when it's snowy, it'll have like a nice little fresh green. Green hair is underneath the snow. Nice. The chunky forest pieces are sweet, says Jump Axis. Wait, Agree. The, ch the chunky? Chunky. Oh, the big. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> the chunky ones. Like, you know. Nice. Yeah, they're, they're, and like when you have a lot of space, like, like it just, the, the sculpting is always, there's more possibilities when it's like a bigger piece than when it's smaller. So I'm a fan of the bigger pieces as well. To look at and to paint. Um, I know you don't really have social media, but we have consistently had one person post their really great painting schemes, mm -hmm. and they're all painting schemes, and I'm actually going to pull some up for you after the stream to show you, but I actually think that, unless I'm like totally wrong, I think Imee202 is one of the people in the 
Dwarven Forge official fans page that keeps posting them, and they have really good, uh, oh, really yeah, good sense of color. See. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you some. Sweet. I think her name's Amy. I think you also... So Casey does customer service, and she says that you're you're her girl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amy. Yeah. Hi, Amy. <laughs> I like her use of emojis when she reaches out to me in customer support. It well, makes me smile. You will be happy to know <laughs> she just sent a smiley face robot emoji. Yeah. So. Hi. <laughs> yeah, we would love to see the uh, alt paint schemes. And, like, genuinely... Oh my gosh, Amy says, yes, yes, Casey, I love you, are so awesome. Yay, you too. Nice. <laughs> Yay, love all around. Um, but for alt paint schemes and stuff, that's one of my favorite things to see. And one of the things I think we keep, like I keep forgetting is that you can buy it painted and then just zhuzh it up so most of the work's yeah. done for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you can like add your own little like little essences. Yeah, like that, like having so many pieces that have like the base color like the initial dry brush on it and then like judging it up like we're hoping to do that in the forest video coming up on the 20 yeah 20 something something yeah it's a number higher yeah. than 10 <laughs> i don't know what today is so who knows but yeah it's coming up it's it's gonna hit you in the face when it's here. <laughs> you better look out there's a rattlesnake <laughs> with bite yeah all I can say is duck. <laughs> <laughs> Quick. <laughs> Think fast. <laughs> um, DMN Game says, I know you guys work on master guides for the factories and for the public, but has Aaron or any other of the painters ever done personal, uh, quote, pushed, unquote, pieces, adding in highlights, blocking, non-standard DF paints, etc.? cetera? Mm, no, because that would require, like, time... Like, that would, like, that's, like, something that I could do with my own pieces, but I've never really, it's always been for the factory. Um, I feel like there were custom things that I've, that I did for, like, when, um, different streamers, we did, like, a whole, um, I think it was during Cavern Seek, we did some, like, custom builds for people, uh, but for yeah, we did some custom builds, and I remember doing, like, a paint scheme that was, like, the dungeon paint scheme on the, um, on the city builder, and that gave it, like, a very, like, rustic, uh, look to it, um, but I, I haven't had a chance to really, like, take things further, um, because it's always been with, like, the factory and, and the production in mind. Oh, I forgot to mention, um, on the Wyverstone pieces, you just want to get the stone part, and it's okay if you go over into the Wyverstone part, because you're going to cover that with uh, a base of black anyway. Are we doing, what time is it? It is 7.44. Okay. Ooh, okay, so... We originally, for this Kickstarter, had a Feywild versus a, um, oh my gosh, what was it called? The under, the other side? We weren't here for that. What Feywild was it called? versus Shadowfell. Shadowfell, that's what it was. Did you have any good ideas in mind for, thank you, thank you, Chuck, um, for, like, the paint schemes you were going to use? Like, do you ever draft your paint schemes before you start? Um, I kind of look at, like, it... Yeah, the initial like swamp um, renditions on the pieces. Like I remember starting one back during Hellscape, and it was just it was an unfinished piece that Toby basically just cast. And I remember just like using that as like a little sketch pad, but like on an unfinished piece that he cast. Um, and I remember going crazy with like really vibrant um, reds and oranges, but also like next to really like muted purples. And there were a lot of colors going on, but that was like, that was something I was experimenting with the uh, more of the dead kind of like toxic shadow fell. Um, but the, the issue with that was it just, it would be in like looking at it in hindsight, like it would be way too complicated for the factory to reproduce consistently. 
but definitely Shadowfell. Like I could, I could envision like the swamp being very like Shadowfell, especially the banks and like all the different painting and all the different plants, like really like putrid, like dried blood colors. Ew. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I could definitely, like, that would be a really cool thing to do. Um, but, yeah, I guess, like, Shadowfell is easier for me to envision than the Fae. Um, specifically, like, on the banks. Um, yeah, I think Shadowfell would have been really cool. And there's definitely something at the beginning that we were thinking about, but it, I think it was just too specific. Um, it would hard to be. It would be really hard to be compatible with the existing Dread Hollow if we had like, <laughs> like <laughs> dried blood plants. <laughs> <That's so sick. laughs> yeah, it would be that. cool. But get on payment. Yeah, I'm going. That's You'll awesome. get more placement. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> yeah, it like. Yeah, I'm, it would have been cool. Like a weird bleedy river. Or something yeah, 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 yeah. Pus river. Oh, ew. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Um, was any halfling blood really used for the painting of these pieces? Ha 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 ha. So Seraphis the Bland. Uh, not these, because these don't have red in them. Right. But if you see red, yeah, there's halfling blood. Like, Hellscape was almost entirely blood. Like, we had to, lots of sacrifices. We just threw in red for fun, even when there wasn't red in the color. Oh, yeah, just throw it in there. We just were like, like a well, few like, drops. Yeah, we'll wash it off later, but, uh, yeah. let's just get some blood on that for good measure. <laughs> yeah. We would dip the pieces in blood like they were like chicken fingers. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> this is some of the four to six energy. Yeah, for sure. Um, ever tempted to paint in a river full of eyeballs? One a uh, rabbit burner would like to know. No, but I'm up for I'm up for it. But now. <laughs> but now you've given me an idea. Yeah. Uh, you could use googly eyes, but that's not the same. Uh, yeah. I mean, maybe if they were, like, like really dirtied up, so they became, like, really, like, putrid looking. Yeah. So it didn't, like, seem like a googly eye. Yeah, dip it in blood first. Yeah, dip it in blood first. Oh. That's kind of the motto of Just Dwarven rub Ford. some blood on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Rabbit Burner also says, sure, Nina would sculpt it for the Eye River. Oh, yeah. She's good. Absolutely. She's great at the horrific thing. Yeah. She loves grotesque. We were talking about, like, what authors... At one of our, like, family lunches, we were talking about what authors everyone would be. And she's the, she just immediately said, I'd be Stephen King. Yes, that's true. Wait, what author would you be? Oh, I, I never decided. Ooh. Who, who wrote Sea Spot Run? Um... <laughs> Is that the same person that does Dick and Jane? Oh, wait, Dr. <laughs> Seuss? <laughs> the children's book, Sea Spot Run. There's a children's book called Dick and Jane. <laughs> I don't know. That's I have what no I just idea what you're talking about. Sassy? <laughs> I think I would be Roald Dahl. Come fight me if you think otherwise. Um. Do the Aranthor escarpments have any thoughtful touches that Aaron recommends painting since Blackout Sun? Mm. Well, the one that comes to mind in Aranthor is the natural stone bridge. Actually, like on the underside, there's a little lizard. Uh, I painted him, I think I painted him like green, but that's one of the ones, the one thoughtful touches I can think of. Oh, there's also, on the waterfall, there's a little yeah. fish. Wait, what color are you going to do it? I don't know yet. I Like, I haven't decided. Um, that was kind of like, I kind of left it just um, unpainted because you would be able to see it from the front, I feel like. Oh, but I don't I know. Maybe last minute I'll, I'll throw in some sort of wash or something before we send it to the, the factory, but... I just kind of left it alone right now. But yeah, there's a fish there. <laughs> uh, Denth28 says the mountains look great, Aaron. Oh, thank you. Um, would you ever do like the fish white, maybe? And then the people at home could choose to do it pink for salmon? Ooh. 
Wait, uh-huh. what do you mean? Like produce it white and then they could paint it anyway? Yeah. Paint? Yeah, may- maybe. So it's like pre based. Yeah, I just feel like if you did it white, it kind of leaves it up to. Uh, like it won't disrupt the waterfall as much since you already have white paint on the front. Yeah. Or you could just leave it blank too. It might be simpler. Yeah, I'll think about it. That's a good. That could be a good thing. It's like a blank slate. Uh, Felix Draconis says, I think my difficulty figuring out how to start is the escarpments are a darker black plastic versus the Aranthor, which I can see was more of a medium gray. Yeah, the, is he talking about the unpainted version? Yes. Oh yeah, so that's something we're actually, we're, we're trying to like, um, change because to simplify things in the production of Dread Hall, Dread Hall and all of K6, we wanted to keep the same casting color because um, it would be too much for the factory to change. But now we're realizing like it's better to just make things easier for people and it also makes the paint schemes that we do more consistent. So uh, the next run of the, actually like the next, next run of Dread Hollow and the production of uh, Will, uh, Wildlands, we're gonna tr- try and do all the escarpments, all the mountain pieces, cast in, with the exception of the waterfalls, which will be, be blue clear. We're going to try and map, make it the exact same base color as the Aaron Thor. Um, but I can go over, like in, a, in a, an instructional video for the Aaron Thor, I can go over the exact ratio to create that base color so that if you have a lot of unpainted Dread Hollow, you can um, easily match it uh, to the to the factory Aaron Thor. Uh, what was the ratio for the base color again? It was 60-40 of what? The, no, 60-40 was the brown. Okay. Um, the base color I don't know the exact ratio on. I just know it's a combination of predominantly um, base gray with a little bit of black and then even less of lava and bubbles blue. Okay. So I don't know the exact ratio, but I can, I can, um, figure it out and we could, when we do like a more like instructional video yeah um, for yeah. sure um lots of thank yous well thanks guys <laughs> like like i was so i'm always getting nervous like on camera and like mace and everyone just being so nice in the chat is like really really like i feel very comfortable right now <laughs> well i have something even more comforting to tell you yeah <laughs> 69 whiskey just followed us nice. Wait, who's that? i don't know but their name is 69 <laughs> whiskey so thank you 69 whiskey nice, nice. Thank you. <laughs> i lion blaze says you're great on camera thanks thank you thank you Uh, Neofoya says some people really have amazing usernames, which I totally agree. And I'm kind of sad that I've picked the boring username that I have. Have you guys ever had any good ones? No, mine have all already been always been my name, or it's been like something that I regret <laughs> from my <high> school. <laughs> it's not like cringy, yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that at the time I thought was like, oh, this is so cool. Yeah, like, look at how edgy and funny <laughs> yeah. I am. This tells me what my interests are. This tells the world <laughs> what my interests are. And then... Soccer chick, uh, 1995. <laughs> uh, Pro Mind says, Aaron, you are my daughter's role model. She loves painting. Oh, that's so sweet. That's really nice. I was into painting a lot from a young age, too. When did, did you do minis first at the company or did you do it before you started here? Uh, no, I actually, um, I never painted terrain before. Uh, I just went to art school in the city for a little bit and then um, Stefan had heard that, like I had experience with painting. So he just hired me one summer to do like prototypes. I think for like KS, it was after KS1 had launched but it was 
he had like a bunch of people just paint some of the dungeons for him um and that was kind of how I got started with the company and like that was my first experience with painting terrain nice I uh I painted minis before I even tried the terrain here but nice the terrain seems fairly simple once you kind of got the basics down like brush uh dry brush and uh washes and everything yeah it's it's nothing like you don't have to have like exact precision like you do with miniatures um yeah you can kind of like it's kind of nice it com becomes like meditative for me like when i'm doing like a huge batch of them like you don't have to be super careful about everything you're ha like you just get this like it's like riding a bike kind of like it's like you just automatically go on like autopilot mode sometimes and I don't know it's nice yeah I'm gonna give some time for the brush strokes we had another ASMR person nice <laughs> can you hear it all right that's enough <laughs> don't want to spoil them um, what sort of stuff did you paint before you painted terrain? Um, I mostly did oil paintings. Uh, yeah, mostly just like semi-realistic, um, oil paintings. Uh, that was pretty much, like I, I just kind of had like a basic level of training from high school and then I just went to art college and, um, that was like the far, like, the, it was just basically paint, oil painting, that's it. Oil painting is incredibly different from acrylic, though. Yeah, okay. like, acrylic was always, like, the bane of my existence, because I'd always want to, like, take my time with it, and it dries so quickly. Yeah. So, like, here, like, the, this was definitely, like, an adjustment. Um, I think if I'd have to, like, blend things together, kind of like you have to do with miniatures, um... Like, I can get easily frustrated sometimes, so, but with terrain, like, you don't have to, it's actually a benefit that the acrylic dries so quickly, because you can dry brush a lot, and, like, once you've dry brushed this piece, then this piece is art, like, when you're working on this piece, this piece is already dried. But, like, the factory actually uses, they don't use acrylic, they use, um, lacquer, which is similar to oil paint, and they have to, like, leave it in the sun for it to dry. Oh, wow. Yeah. I can't even imagine, like, I wonder why they use lacquer over acrylic. There must be, like, a reason why. So, yeah, I think this is good for um, the s showing the second step. Um, the next on some of these pieces would either be filling in the green and the foliage, or on the wire stone pieces, um, filling in the black. So I think next I'm gonna f I'm gonna paint in the wire stone. So for the base coat, I'm just going to take black and I'm going to carefully um, paint in the wire stone details. How did you decide on the right color for the waterfalls uh, based against like the mat? Uh, I. Well, the, I feel like the, I felt like from the beginning that the casting color would do a lot of the heavy lifting, um, because if you get the right like tone in the casting, um, that was what the map basically was. It was like this really strong aqua color with like accents of greens and then accents of whites, and also like the sh the shininess of the edges that that helps a lot. So it was like the water mats the design is just like it's just gorgeous like the color of it is great and it was just it was it was something that's like it's very clear enough 
to be able to emulate and paint, but it like it's like so it's like very it's like simple in terms of color, but it's like really beautiful and like really effective and really realistic too. Were there other color iterations chosen for the Wyvern Stone? Um, I remember kind of going with more of a, a silvery neutral color. Um, and that, that just, it just didn't come off as, the, 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 when it was kind of like in, when the sculptors were sculpting it, they just kept saying over, over and over, like, ba it's like basalt, it's like, it's like, um, like the dark black shiny rock that's like got a blue tint to it. So I, I feel like deviating from like so many people's expectation or inspiration, like I couldn't really do that in this case. Like it would only feel right if it was black with like a, a blue slick um, to it. So I kind of went with that. I didn't really explore too much. Um, I remember like people in the office like, uh, I remember Tyler saying he would do like a bronzy, orangey, metallic color, and that se that seems like pretty interesting. It just like I didn't want it to deviate too much from everyone's like inspiration when the sculptors were sculpting it. So it was kind of like I tried one or two things, and this stuck the best, so decided to roll with that. Apparently some of the chat has had issues with Hellscape still being sticky or wet also. Oh, um, yeah, that sometimes happens with, that's like, that's a, sh that's like a shitty thing to ha happen. It's because the factory uses lacquer. Yeah. And sometimes like the darker color doesn't dry properly. Like they tr they've tried to get better at it and like put it out in the sun longer. Um, I'd say like a, some kind of like matte varnish could help a lot with that. Okay. Like if they spray it on that, um, it, it, it'll be less sticky. They also said it was very rare that one in a thousand pieces were like that with lots of color. Um, but I guess if you can set them in the window or if you like use a, uh, varnish, you said? Yeah. We could also like have Eric maybe message them and see if he can work that out after the Kickstarter. Yeah, to maybe. Yeah, because it's not the first time, I guess, that there's been paint issues that he's had to kind of uh, figure out, like, the um, the ice stuff, too. Hmm. Um, Eldritch Alchemist says, Tester's Dull coat spray varnish uh, takes care of the stickiness issue. Nice. I think I've also had it on like the barrels or whatever that we have here. There's a few sticky barrels. Under oh there. yeah, there's the sticky barrels, um, and like the little wooden boxes of yeah. the barrels those are always really we could just do it as like now with more realistic tar <laughs> bring your own feathers we just had a bunch of those in the plague stone oh. and they weren't sticky they were so. well, that's oh that's good, good. Yeah, good. also clear coating helps protect paint from chipping says jump access yeah, and they could give, like, the shiny gloss could give the hellscape, like, a really cool look. Like a black obsidian kind of look. Ooh. Like, very sleek and evil. Have you seen those videos of people, like, mining at a volcano that, like, just erupted and pulling out the rocks while they're still molten? No, but it sounds pretty cool. <laughs> it's awesome, and people keep saying that they want to eat it. And I kind <laughs> of... Like In the video... Yeah, um, it looks like like a weird like ready like a fruit gusher kind of like syrupy. Oh, yummy. Yeah, I would, yeah, I definitely dig in. Bone, right? Bone appetit. 
Um, mm-hmm. uh, Felix Dracana says, I think it's interesting that you put on sporadic reddish brown paint on, whereas I made most of my Aranthor pieces that with just a little under gray. Wish I could remember why I did that now. Smiley face with a robot. I'm not sure. R- reddish? Does he mean the brown? brown? Maybe this looks does... red on camera. It's a, it's a little bit like sienna over here. Okay. It's more like in person. It's more of a, it's more of like a warm, like golden brown. Um, but what what was he saying? He puts on gray. He he just used a. Uh, mm, do do a little under gray instead oh okay so he just goes in with the final dry brush beforehand yeah it looks like he just has really cool colored um oh cool that that can be a really cool look especially for a mountain like if it's really icy yeah it's nice to play with the cool colors uh do you know any other languages blackout sun would like to know no no i learned a little bit of spanish in high school but that's it uh bien (laughs) Muy bien. <laughs> uh, ¿Cómo estás? Uh, bien. <laughs> ¿Dónde está uh, backpack? <laughs> uh, mi backpack está yonder. ¿Dónde está el map? Uh, I don't know, boots. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost everything. <laughs> <laughs> sold it all. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, we needed the money more than we needed my backpack. <laughs> um, are the new battle boards magnetic like the metal ones? Also, can they be two-sided as well? Um, they are one-sided as of right now, and they have a plate of metal, so the magnets will stick to them, but they are not themselves magnetic. We were toying with the idea of having magnet magnets in the side so that they clip together, but that proved to be unnecessary as they like were really weighty. It would just have cost more money. And we, I don't know, it didn't seem like something we wanted to charge extra for. Uh, Xanacles says, this stream is nice, relaxing. It makes me realize that on the anvil streams always make me anxious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, Xanacles. Sometimes I'm a little anxious on the streams, too, depending on how much coffee I've had and how much alcohol I have not had. But there are a lot... High energy is a lot of fun, too. Sometimes it'll put you right in the right in the mood, but we serve to have the duality of human, right? Yeah, this is my high energy. <laughs> yeah. She's bouncing off the walls right now. I've never seen her like this before. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, sorry. They are magnetic. Uh, Chris corrected me. It, the other side is magnetic, so you can attach previous terrain trays on it. But the uh, sides themselves are not magnetic, and the top is metal, so things can attach to that. Um, Chris says, Nate is 100% chaotic. I feel like I'm chaotic, too. You're chaotic, but you're, like, he's high-energy chaotic. You're, like... Mellow chaotic. I'm like deep seated chaotic. Yeah, you like have to figure out more about the woman to know about the chaos. <laughs> chaotic good though. Chaotic chill, says Orion Noir. Chaotic chill is a good band name. Yeah, I like that. Too bad we already have a band. Yep. I guess we don't have one with Casey, though. Yo, yeah, we should turn on... in on this band. Chaotic yeah. Chillis. Well, I'm sorry, but you can't be part of Sherry and the She Shacks. But that's because that we was could a do moment in a different time. Band. We're going to have a new band. Chaotic right. Chill. Cool. Chaotic Trillist. Justice Armand says, what up, fam? <laughs> Coming in with that chaotic high energy. I love it. <laughs> Balance us out, Justice That's chaos right there. <laughs> the way I took out the oh, pain. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I get so much pain on my hands. Um, Eldritch Alchemist says, I love the Nick Cage, not the bees mug in the background. Oh, thank you. <laughs> do you have a good Nick Cage impression? No. Nope. But I... you do. Say it. 
Uh, <laughs> I can't really swear on stream, though. You can say not the bees. Not the bees! <laughs> <laughs> Bringing me, killing me won't bring back your honey! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like he's really here. <laughs> the cage is within us and outside of us. And for the dry brush on the wire, the wire stone, it's not just straight um, interference blue by Golden. It's a mixture of it with black, so it's like dulled down a little bit. Because if you go in straight with just the interference blue, it's like it's too much. Erin, what are you doing with that mix, says Amy. But I don't think she wants to say it as harshly as I said. I think she's like, oh, Erin, what are you doing with the mix? Oh, I'm just mixing a little bit of interference with black. Just to, like, dull it down a little bit. So it's not so, like, blinding when you put it on um, the black wire stone. It's just, like, subtle. Like, it just glistens a little bit when you when you look at it from a different angle. Or turn it, or... The interference paints are my favorite ones. Yeah. <laughs> They're hard not to use on everything. No, I would. <laughs> I remember one of the first jobs I had here was finding, I think, three or four different opalescent-ish or iridescent paints that was used on the crystals, maybe? I don't know. But that's one of the first things I remember is going to the artist at Craftsman and being like, this is my job? Oh, yeah. I remember being like, oh, we need more for the crystals. It was like, I, I, Kevin. Run. I remember that. Wow, memories. <laughs> <laughs> See, like Nick Cage. <laughs> oh, memory. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> memories. <laughs> That's a hard one to say. Yeah. What a fun man. Wait, what's your favorite Nick Cage film? Is it Mandy? Uh, Yeah, I'd say Mandy or the... <laughs> the... the planet the colors from oh, another planet um color yeah S help me out chat <laughs> yeah what's that new nick cage movie about space and colors and stuff that was pretty good mine is um the vampire one yeah vampire's kiss i also like raising arizona a lot con air is funny but it's like too boring yeah uh color of outer space nice from outer space the wicker man's dope i love the wicker man yeah yeah that's a classic, yeah. That's the one where he goes around punching ladies. And <laughs> he's like, oh, great, another plant, when he meets another woman. <laughs> uh, Chris says, in outer space, no one can hear you paint. Us. Well, you only have to see the color. Yeah, you can feel the painting. Yeah. Through the color. Yes. <laughs> Fun fact, I think I've told you this before, but Nick Cage was almost Superman in Tim Burton. Oh, Burton's that would have been Superman. great. Yeah, like, I am so mad that they made so many Batman movies over and over and over again with so many different Batmans. And Jokers, too. Like, they wasted all that effort on lame <laughs> Batman. But then Nick Cage didn't get to be Superman? Are you kidding me? Timmy, what was going on? <laughs> Did you just call Tim Burton Timmy? <laughs> I, mean, I don't think people refer to him as that. I do. We're on a different level. Oh, okay. Timmy. Oh, wait. Chuck posted a soundboard. Oh. Of Nick Cage? Yeah. Aw. Oh, Chuck, you saint. <laughs> Here, let's listen. Okay. It says 18 plus. Oh. Oh, it's playing through the computer. We'll have to imagine it. <laughs> I guess I can put the head. Here. Put these on for a second. You Just have to, to guess what. It's... Yeah, guess what the name of it is. This is a good painting segment, right? All right. Here's the first one. Can you hear it? Nothing. Bummer. It was how did it get burned? <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell me. All right. Well, give That's me it? back my headphones, please. <laughs> <laughs> we'll listen to this after. Okay. Chuck, thanks. Uh. We're going to abuse the uh, office. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to get fired within the next several weeks from overuse of Nick Cage's sound bites. And playing the bass guitar. Oh, that's at home now. I won't get fired for that. Until I bring it back in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chaotic chill. Chaotic drill. Chill. Chaotic skill. 
This is the fiber stone when it's done. Ooh. Why are you laughing? Somebody posted a meme in the chat. What's the meme of? I'm showing you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. My hair is a bird, your argument is invalid. I was gonna make that my profile pic on the work slack, but I decided to go with a different one. I really like I like when people change up the work slack photos with memes and stuff. It just shows how much we, uh, like there's white collar and blue collar jobs, but I think that there's such thing as a blue button up too. Like it's right in between <laughs> white collar and blue collar. <laughs> uh, You're saying that's what we are? Yeah, definitely. We straddle the line of being a legitimate <laughs> workplace and then also being able to wear pajamas in. <laughs> This is an amazing painting statement. I can't believe I've not watched this before. It says, not the real Gimpy. Thanks, Gimpy. <laughs> no, 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 it's not the real Gimpy. It's oh, not I take the it real back. Gimpy. I take it back. <laughs> Thank you, fake Gimpy. <laughs> Where's Gimpy? <laughs> what have you done with Gimpy? If you're the real Gimpy, name five of your songs. <laughs> is he naming them? Yeah. He <laughs> says, number one, a little uh, gimpy number five. Um, number two, uh, the real gimp she. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the people in the chat. Oh, they didn't. That was me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you loved me. <laughs> it was uh, you all along. It was you me. were the real gimpy all along. I was the real gimpy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what color of green is that Roland the Rogue would like to know? Yeah, so the base color for the moss and all the forest greenery is shallow water green. I like shallow water green. Me too. Yeah, you're saying that. It's your favorite color. Yeah. Out of all the picornies. Yep. It's the best picorny paint. It's pretty. It's like, it's not quite an emerald. It's like a, it's a bright, like, Irish green. Yeah. It's like, it matches the background. Yeah. Which, the chat sadly doesn't get to see that well, so I'm going to zoom out to just your face real quick. Oh, that didn't help. Good, let's go back in. <laughs> How do you avoid getting painter's claw while doing big batches, says Flexible Minotaur. Uh, it's not so much my hands that bother me. It's more like my legs falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> she paints a lot with her feet. She's just doing yeah. hands for the stream. <laughs> no, it's more like sitting down for long periods. Like, it's like, I don't have very good posture to begin with. So I'm like, oh, by the end of the day, like, I'm just like, my back hurts, my neck hurts, and I can't walk. <laughs> so <I'm not> <laughs> But that's my own fault for, like, not having good posture. I'm sad the, uh, Erin got a, uh, one of those standing, not standing desk. It's like a, she got a bike, like a rotary oh, yeah. bike thing for her desk, and it just kept slipping around, and yeah. then she has a wheel, not a wheelchair, but a chair with, with wheels. Yeah, so, so. it wasn't working. Yeah, I basically got, like, a stationary bike, because I, I felt like... I, I did, like during this I wasn't able to walk a lot or like get outside so I was like I'm just gonna bike while painting and it failed miserably because there wasn't enough like traction on the bike and there wasn't enough traction in my seat so like I would just fall over <laughs> 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 while painting now I've commandeered it for my uh, Mad Men office though yeah, she that. she's got a whole like Mad Men like lounge. Yeah, I uh, her, where her desk people, is situated. Yeah, I'm basically Don Draper in this office. <laughs> <laughs> I'm her secretary. Uh, yeah, firing people like nobody's business. Yeah, Erin takes my calls. She, that like she does the ocular pat down on anybody that comes to the door, <laughs> makes sure that they're like clean to come through. Um, doesn't let people bother me when I'm napping. It's great. Neat. Um, Vertex artist says that they forget to drink water while doing huge batches or eat or breathe sometimes. Yeah, like I, I don't drink water. That's the thing. Like I've, I've always wanted to have like, <laughs> this is 
This sounds silly, but like an IV hooked up to me. You want just an in IV? general because I'm so bad at drinking water. You that... also want a wheelchair though. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, no. No, she has been talking about IV for a while, and I, uh, I don't know. Maybe that's something that you could ask for for your birthday. Is that a real thing? <laughs> Oh, Toku yeah. Verde says, Dunk says hi. Oh, hi, Dunk. Hi, Dunk. What's your uh, Instagram, Duncan? Yeah. Does Hazel have an Instagram? No. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say the Instagram? Yeah, of course. It's at it's underscore 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 Dunk. There you go. D-U-N-K. Come on and slam. Yeah. Ooh, Wiley Coyote zero zero says uh, that Orion Noir bought a vintage rolling Dennis light to keep himself from squinting. Ooh, oh, so it's a light that helps you. It's probably like one of these, oh. just to keep it from like the piece well lit. Oh yeah, we have really nice. I don't know the name of ours, but it like it's definitely. Also, like where where my desk is situated, I've got really nice northern light. So we don't get any kind of direct light. So it's the the pieces. I, sometimes I don't even have to use the lamp. Like the natural daylight is is nice most of the day. We don't have a Duncan emoji yet. A lot of the chat is sad. Yeah. Do you know how to make emojis? Um, I know a guy. Nice. They're called the graphics team. They're kind of busy right now. <laughs> Guys, drop everything. People don't need stretch goals. No, we need to bring need people done. more happiness. Mm -hmm. um, what's it like in the DF HQ after one of y'all's Kickstarters? Do you like pizza parties or have DF challenges? Like, who can fit the most trifecta terrain in their mouths? <laughs> no, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, one at home I'm often, that one says Justin. What did that lady say? He says he plays that a lot at his home. <laughs> Just, <laughs> Wait. Justin, I'm concerned. Justice. Justice? Yeah. Justice. Who, which is the root of the name Justin, so you're very close. But, like, how <laughs> many pieces can you fit in your also, mouth? what's your favorite flavor of terrain? Yeah. yeah. Tell us. Mine's mint chocolate chip. Is it? You don't have that terrain. You're right. <laughs> I like fiery cinnamon hellscape. Ooh. Well, I cool got, mint Aaron Tor Mountain. I was thinking like mint chocolate trees. <laughs> <laughs> and they're dark. <laughs> nice. Uh, Toby says he has a record of 15 trifecta in his mouth. Which I'm just going to say, I challenge you to show us tomorrow <laughs> on your birthday. Yeah. Just so the chat knows, Tofu Verde's birthday is tomorrow. The trees taste like broccoli, says Blackout Sun. Thank you. <laughs> Justice. <laughs> Justice Armin says, for me, it depends on whether or not that huge curved wall piece is fair game because that one has always, always has to go last like an orange wedge over my teeth. So he's got a whole method in shoving yeah, the orphan He does the mouth. easy ones first, it sounds like, and then saves the bigger ones for last. It's like Chubby Bunny, but you have more than one size marshmallow. <laughs> What was that we were playing? Chubby Bunny. We were playing Chubby Bunny with the sound like that. Oh my gosh. Wait, what was it? It was the guy who sings You Have a Friend in Me from Toy Story. Oh though. yeah, Randy Newman. Yeah, Is we that played it? the Ra Randy Newman Chubby Bunny in the office. Yeah, basically you just, it's Chubby Bunny, but you say you got a friend in me in Randy Newman voice. And after one marshmallow, it sounds pretty accurate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I uh, guess you could do that with terrain. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Let's choke on some terrain. Okay. All right, get that varnish in my mouth, please. <laughs> uh, Ryan Noir says, molds are molds, let's get some chocolate in there. Which, one thing that's exciting, we can't really use yeah, uh, not food, food safe. Mo we don't have food safe molds, but I did buy a food safe mold mix so we can have one small piece made out of chocolate. Yeah, maybe we should do that for a stream. I was wondering, so tomorrow's stream, oh, yeah. we're doing the Hag's Den, and like one of the key elements of that from like Critical Role is cupcakes. So I was like, maybe we could get a nice little topper on the cupcake that's made out of chocolate. Ooh. But that would take a lot of planning that we don't have the time for necessarily. Yeah. And it turns out Tyler hates cupcakes. Yeah, he doesn't like cake. 
I brought in all these cakes, and I don't know. I just, people who don't like dessert, like, I just don't get it. I think he likes dessert. I think he doesn't like cake. But that's, like, the main dessert. That's the big American one. Yeah. I would, like... But all around the world, like, the main dishes, like, a lot of countries have cake-based desserts. It's true, it's true. (laughs) I can understand not necessarily liking cake. I like cake, but I prefer, like like ice cream cake or like something that's really creamy so it's not just yeah. like the dryness of bread like i like tiramisu so yeah that's like your favorite cakey. one yeah chris says tyler likes dessert he just doesn't like cake or christmas or anything that makes you think of childhood that's fun yeah so glad he works at a toy place <laughs> <laughs> he is the safety police <laughs> yes when we yeah his catchphrase is i hate fun anything to stop fun is my that's what i'm gonna do Yep. Yep. He said that. He screamed at Every me. day when he comes in, he'll <laughs> scream so at first thing, He goes to each individual's desk, and the first thing he'll say to you is, Good morning. I hate fun. I'm going to do anything in my power to stop you and everybody else from having fun. And then I'll move on to the next person and say the exact yeah, same thing. Yeah, and he'll turn abruptly if someone's talking in the middle of the meeting. He'll be like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Chris says, if you know Tyler outside of Dwarven Forge, him being in charge of safety is hilarious. Toby says, thanks for the birthday wishes. That's too much fun, Toby. Do not thank people for your birthday wishes. We are only going to say it is your birthday as a factual statement and not as a celebratory thing. All right. (laughs) Yeah, you like tiramisu. (laughs) (laughs) We're going back to the fun cake talk. Yeah, this makes me hungry. I want to eat much dessert now. Eat some dessert. Nobody's stopping you. There's we have dessert. Oh, we can procure dessert very easily. I don't think we have dessert, but we have some ketchup packets and a whole lot of imagination. Um. Ooh. I can't stop thinking about dessert. I know. What's the thing? <laughs> Sorry. We're just going to be like um, painting this on glaze onto this brownie. <laughs> Get a nice frosting layer in there. Yeah. Uh, we're having cake tomorrow also, though. So if you can hold out for like what 12 hours. Surprise? It was definitely not a surprise. <laughs> oh, he didn't even he go Toby helped me cake. pick out the cake. <laughs> Toby, cover your ears five seconds ago. Elf Home 11 says, Great stream. I really wanted to see the technique for painting the rest of the waterfall. Yep, we're, we're going to do it. All right. <laughs> That's, well, actually, there's, I'm going to do one of the final green step on one of the pieces, and then we're going to go to the water. Sick. Okay. Can you hold out for, like, ten minutes, Elf Home? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I yeah. don't know. <laughs> yeah. I answered for him. But <laughs> I'm sure he wanted you yeah. okay. to answer for him. Uh, Keen Mantle says, are the waterfalls stackable to make one tall waterfall? They look very cool. Yes, they are. Stackable and very cool. Yeah, I don't know if the other waterfall pieces here, but... Do you want me to grab? Yeah, sure. All right. Nope. Okay. Casey, grab. There, there's two on my desk. I think there hasn't been a single stream yet during the Kickstarter where we haven't shown off the waterfalls. Yeah, people are obsessed. I'm obsessed. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you have to make sure it's dry. And it's like semi-dry. Mm. Oh, thanks. So, usually people put the cutout piece around both of these two um, in a build, but this is just kind of like how they stack just on their own. Nice. A little lower, Mm -hmm. a little to your left. Other way, sorry. Yeah, there you go. Excellent. 
And then if you're not able to wait around until the end, as Chris has said, we're putting every World Land stream into a playlist on this channel that will be here forever. Oh, yeah. Um, Cal Sile says, have any of Aaron's paint jobs influenced the painting of any new pieces that wouldn't have existed otherwise? Mm, the, well, um, KS5, which I was, like, involved in heavily the painting, was based off dungeons. And then Caverns was kind of based off the previous Caverns. Um, so I think, like, the Dread Hollow was the first time that I just kind of, except for taking the rocks and making them match Arenthor, um, that was kind of like up to me, like whatever, like I had a lot of more creative freedom, like I wasn't trying to match it to previous previous sets, except for the Arenthor the, in the rock formations and the escarpments. Nice. So. Yak666 yeah. says, my god, you can paint. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, and another thing that I've discovered that makes it easier to dry brush is like a, a lot of the lighter colors, um, they come out really watery. So what I like to do is I like to have the paint sit for a while out in open air so it gets like tackier and thicker. And that's like a great tip that I've discovered, especially with like um, high full acrylic. Sometimes for dry brushing, it can be way too watery. Like even when you shake the bottle up a lot, um, if you just like leave it in a cup in the open air, it gets really thick and that really helps. You don't want it to get, to get too thick, but when it gets like kind of like a, like a, kind of like a <laughs> more liquid pudding or something. <laughs> <laughs> not, not really a pudding, like a, I don't know, like a creamy sauce or something. It's like a, like a half and half. Oh yeah, like a little bit thicker than a half and half. <laughs> Between half and half and heavy cream. Yeah. Um, that makes it easier, at least for me, to dry brush. Because, it, like, it, it gets a tacky and it, it doesn't, like, smudge when you're dry brushing. It actually, like, picks up the texture. Uh, what's the green dry brush mix you're using right now? So, yeah, this one, sorry for not mentioning, it's not a mix, it's just moss green. Nice. Very appropriate. Yeah. Do you want to match it to the moss on the table? What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Fits right in. <laughs> You'd never know. Yeah. Little boy on top of the moss. Can you see that? Yeah. Over here? Okay. <laughs> What's that boy got in that jar? In uh, that jug? That's what I always want to know. You, you know, you can use your imagination to put anything in there. Yeah. I think it's his grandmother's ashes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that without skipping a beat. <laughs> I just know what I would carry around at all times. Yeah. So. Um... Do you shock the people at the factory when you ask them to do the large three by six by two escarpment long pieces? Um, well, I think from, yeah, I think from a production standpoint, yeah, they freak out at the larger pieces. Um, I think they prefer larger pieces than undercuts. Like larger pieces are just expensive, but as far as like painting, it's just it. It's not more complicated, it's just more surface area. So I don't think, like, from a painting standpoint, they're bothered by that. It's more just, like, the whole idea of creating a steel mold mm. of it. Uh, Blackout Sun says that within that vase, it's a bucket of trifecta terrain to jam in his mouth later. <laughs> you wish. <laughs> uh, what is the possibility of a modular pirate ship? We do have a modular ship coming out that's also backwards compatible with the ship that came out in... Was it caverns? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, maybe there could be like a modular pirate ship. Yeah, um, maybe in the future. We're like we're talking about potential accessories that go on it, and we always like to kind of add accessories and pull accessories with whatever Kickstarter. So, this one we have kind of more of like it feels like it fits the swampy theme. 
but that doesn't mean that that's the end, you know? Yeah. Mm. So the, I'm gonna do the water, the waterfall. Um, and that's using, for the most part, it's using just a uh, regular like titanium white, um, a mixture of shallow water with bubbles blue to create like this aqua color. And uh, just regular clear gloss or clear nail polish. I've got Sally Hansen Mega Skin. <laughs> 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 She's not our sponsor. <laughs> no, but we do love Sally. <laughs> I personally prefer Revlon, but Sally, like I, I also bought that one. So did yeah. I? Is that mine or not mine? But like the one that I got. Maybe. Okay. Sally's cool though. The do moss ball got some paint on it. Do my. Oh. <laughs> it oh, adds. That's uh, a character. texture. That could yeah. be a texture like tool. Um, so basically this is a dry brush but it's like it's kind of filling in the paint uh really opaquely at the bottom where like the mist um is and then it's like transitioning it up uh and kind of like shading it in where it's lighter in some areas and um not light like no white at all in some areas to like recreate the st streaming of water if that makes sense yeah have you looked at like photos of how waterfalls and everything to like know where to highlight the white yeah things? so usually like it's kind of like little wispy whites here and then it just gets more and more like pronounced with the white and it kind of becomes like this um just becomes like completely white white out at the bottom and then there are like little streams of light, like right w where it's picking up momentum. And it's like a lot of little streams then coming into um, a bigger <laughs> waterfall. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna do a really thick layer at the bottom. And this casting color is a little bit more blue than the the actual pro the actual paint master. Um, the casting color that I showed you guys is pretty close. Is much closer than um, the one that I'm working on. The one that I'm working on is a little bit more blue, but it's it's pretty close. Yeah, they look very similar. Uh, Chris says dry brush on water. What will they think of next? <laughs> Good one, Chris. Nice. Nice. The color of the waterfalls really remind me of Alpine River slash Lake, says Neopoya. Oh, nice. I'm still getting Baja Blast vibes. <laughs> you know, for even for being a little bit more blue, though, those two pieces are incredibly similar. Yeah. Like, I don't think I could point out the difference in them unless I was given, like, five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Did any last? Maybe six. <laughs> any last? Hey, that's pretty good. Thank you. Oh, I see it now. <laughs> that was less than five minutes. No, no, no. I've, I've been here for an hour and a half. I've been trying to compare them <laughs> the whole time. Like, how are these two pieces different? Are yeah. they even painted differently? <laughs> and now I see it's been an hour and a half, and I oh, see clearly. Nice. It's really been an hour and a half? Yeah. An hour and 40 minutes. Can you believe it? Wow. Time flies when you're thinking about Nick Cage. Mm. Now, if we were to do like a, uh, like a, oh, what's that waterfall called in Buffalo? Niagara Falls. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, You'd have to have like a lady like 
in a barrel off the side or something. Isn't that like, I don't know. Yeah, that's I'm the, from there and I don't really know. That's the classic is that people with the uh, barrels would go over the side and then the kid with the bucket would stand at the bottom and try and catch them. <laughs> <laughs> Really? <laughs> no, I was trying to bring that kid with the bucket back. <laughs> uh, hey, fooled me. Blackout Sun would like to know how you manage to work so long every day. Do you get to start later? Oh, no, I'm actually more of a morning person. Like, right now, I'm like, oh, I need to, uh, like, I need to be in bed. Like, it's like my body, like, I usually, like, wake up at, like, 5 or 6 a.m., and, like, my best working hours are in the morning. Um, but, yeah, like, it's kind of like during this time of year, you get used to, like, the longer days. Um, yeah, just, it, it's like you don't feel it till you go home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then you're like, oh, God, <laughs> my body. I prefer mornings, too, but normally... Like, I don't get in that early. I just start walking and do, like... Yeah. I try to, like, uh, appreciate my time in the morning before I come into work, just so I, like... Because you're never really guaranteed in... Like, you you do get to have an out time, especially if you say, like, out by 6 or 7. But, like, yeah. there's some days where it just kind of feels like you uh, never really budget enough time for the work that you have, so you stay later. So having the mornings and then, like, having a lot of time is nice. I feel like most people here... Um, besides, like, video and graphics are kind of, like, morning people. Yeah. And apparently Casey also. Well, you're in the morning a lot. Yeah, well, you're, like, a good midday person, I think. Yeah. I'm, uh, chaotic, and I flip back and forth. Beds are so comfortable. It's, like, the hardest thing. Oh, you don't have to tell me. Yeah. Yeah. I have a bed. I know it. (laughs) (laughs) You start sleeping on concrete, then you get up. Or thumbtacks. Now Ryan Noir says he's inspired by this video. Oh, thanks. What influences the choice of hidden critters slash, slash features when creating the molds? When creating the mold? Uh, uh, the sculpts? The sculpts, I think. I think that Eli and Nina... Like, there was one stream where Eli was even just like, what kind of animal should I put in this? <laughs> he they, did it on air. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, what what stuff are you doing now? Is this the bubbles? Uh, yeah, this is a mixture of bubbles, glue, and chill water. Mm-hmm. And, like, um, even on the white, I don't know if you're... Um, you, I didn't really point it out. I have, like, a thing of water here. So I'm just... In the white step and in this step, I'm kind of, like, using... A little bit of a wash to like because if you just go on with a dry br- brush it just stays on the surface you kind of want a combination of wash washes and dry brushes to like blend um, blend at least the white grady gradiating up into the aqua mm-hmm. I'm going to botch this name, but I think it's Hariu. says these falls are lovely. Wow. Thanks. Or Ariu. How is it spelled? Like H-E-I-R-U. Hiru, maybe? Yeah, maybe Hiru. Um, is the waterfall plastic clear on the bottom? Yeah. L. Wizzle would like to know. So, yes. Yeah, so it looks like this. Okay. <laughs> Riley Coyote wants a sneak peek at the storyline for Saturday's game. And sadly, we cannot give you a sneak peek, A, because that's a Nate top secret hushity hush thing, but B, you never know if one of the characters are going to be watching the stream, so you got to be a little <laughs> secret, a little sneaky. Is one of the characters watching the stream? Who knows? Out yourselves. <laughs> Is there a video for the forest up on the DF website? Oh, there is a video on up for the forest up on the DF website. Is that a good one to follow, or is there a better YouTube video for it? I think for painting in general. Wait, sorry, I got 
uh, there's a video for the forest up on the DF website. Is that a good one to follow, or is there a better YouTube video? Um, the forest is based on the more complex, the more steps paint scheme from the previous Dread Hall. So if you want like, if you want like a green forest with like hints of yellow leaves. Yeah, like, like that's a perfectly good uh, one to use if you want to um, match it to your Dread Hollow stuff. Um, and it'll still be compatible with this new stuff. W oh, eventually, we're going to have a more simplified Dread Hollow tutorial that'll go up. Um, but right now, that one's perfectly good. We're also going to be covering on stream um, if you do have Dread Hollow pieces and if you want to like make them more compatible with the new thing or like to zhuzh up yeah a combination of stuff like and also to show like the swamps work really well with the uh, um new uh old, new and old dread hollow forest stuff like it's basically the p same paint scheme for the new stuff and it works really well with the old stuff too uh would you ever consider making painting videos for alternate seasons for the forest yeah like like it's it's always a matter of like time it's like that's such a cool idea and it'll be such a cool challenge um i feel like winter would be difficult yeah with the leaves on the trees yeah with the uh the evergreen trees though you could probably get something cool oh yeah that would be nice like uh snow frosted evergreens so yeah, the casting color is a little bit different. It's more blue, but that's like the basic idea of like blending um, the two different washes and dry brushes. And then for the final step, um, you just kind of add some gloss to the edge. And then you kind of like in between the white places, like blend it down. Do you prefer gloss varnish versus the nail polish, or is nail polish kind of? I prefer the nail polish because a lot of the glass um, gloss varnishes they're really thick in consistency, and like even when I water them down with um, when, even when I water them down with water, uh, it it just isn't as glossy as using the clear nail polish. So yeah, it just makes the edges darker and gl and glossier. And um, when you line it up with the water terrain tray, it transitions better because it's got that shiny um, look to it. So yeah, that's that's uh, Aaron Thor. That's Aaron. <laughs> yeah, that's Aaron Thor. Oh, for you. one one joke uh, from Michelle that I wanted to say before we peace out was. No, I already I read random. Yeah, I'm saying it for the chat. <laughs> okay. Jeez. <laughs> was, uh, so for the streams, I always ask for jokes or whatever. And Michelle, one of our sculptors, says, As after a day of painting stones, errant Thor. <laughs> I'm going to start saying that. That's a good one. Yeah. If people are like, oh, what's wrong? You keep crying all the time. You can be like, errant Thor. Errant Thor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Thank, Thank you, Aaron, you. for your time. Thank you. It was time. so much fun. It was a lot yeah. of fun. All right, we're going to be back on yodeling another time. Or not even yodeling. We're gonna Something have, else. We're going to surprise you. It's going to be shocking. <laughs> you <laughs> won't believe you. your It will <laughs> shock you. <laughs> All right, bye. Bye, everybody.